Judges chapter 4. We're going to talk about a mighty woman of faith, uh, a prophet. Her name was Deborah. The Bible says in chapter 4 that again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord now that Ehud was dead. Ehud was a a judge. Ehud was a deliverer that God had raised up that we learned about in chapter 3. And it says that the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harosheth Hagliam because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and who cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried to the Lord for help. So again, we see this generation began to abandon God. They began to go away from the things of God. And God said, okay, if you want to go that way, I'll let you I'll, I'll let you go into the hands of Jabin if this is what you want. If this is the direction you want to go. But after 20 years of being cruelly oppressed, they cried out to God. Isn't it interesting how sometimes in life it can take decades before we turn to God? Now, you may be sitting there going, oh, this doesn't apply to me. Oh, this isn't a problem for me. Let, let me put it to you this way. Let me give you a different perspective. Maybe there's an area of your life or an area of my life that we've held back from God. And yeah, we love God, and yes, we're in relationship with the Lord, but maybe there's an area that we kind of hold back from Him. And over a period of years, maybe even decades, we've had challenges in that area of our life because we've tried to do it in our own strength. We've tried to manage it ourselves. We've tried to self-medicate rather than turning to God. It says it took them 20 years essentially to get out on their knees and cry to the Lord. And when they did, there was a woman by the name of Deborah. She was a prophet, the wife of Lepidoth, who was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulon and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Keshon River and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. He says, if you're, He basically says to her, If I'm with you, I'll do it. But I don't have the confidence to do it by myself. Deborah is telling him, she's a prophet, she's telling him, you know, really the will of the Lord. She's telling him what he needs to do. She's giving him counsel of what needs to take place, but he won't go do it alone. Sometimes in our life, we can struggle to hear and to receive and to move on what God speaks to us, and we'll need a little something extra to help give us confidence. It says in verse 9 that she looks at him and she says, certainly I'll go with you, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulon and Naphtali, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went with him. Now Heber the Kenite had left the other Kenites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brothers-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zananim near Kadesh. When they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Herosheth, Hagoyim to the Kishon River, all his men and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Harasheth Hagoyim, and all of Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the family of Heber the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there? Say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay asleep, exhausted. Again, you've been warned. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. So while he was tired, while he was asleep, she, she took a hammer and a nail, and she, she drove it into his skull, and she killed him 
while he was sleeping. At that time, in verse 22, Barak came in pursuit of Sisera and Jael, went out to meet him. Come, she said, I'll show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. So God had raised up this leader. God had raised up this woman, and God had spoken through her because she was a prophet, and she gave counsel to the children of Israel. And as the children of Israel humbled themselves and they turned to God, God began to move on their behalf, and they were able to overcome and defeat their enemies. The story and principle for you and for I is when we turn to God, whether it be for our life or an area of our life, maybe something you're holding back, he can help you to overcome the enemy in your life. I don't care if it's chariots fitted with iron. There is nothing that is too great for our Lord. So on that day, chapter 5, Deborah and Barak, son of Abonoam, sang the song. It's called the Song of Deborah. When the princes in Israel take the lead, when they people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. When you, Lord, went out from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, and the clouds poured down water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. Travels took to winding paths. Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders. When war came to the city gates, but not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with Israel's princes, with the willing volunteers among the people. Praise the Lord. They continue singing. You who ride on white donkeys, sitting on your saddle blankets, and you who walk along the road, consider the voice of the singers at watering places. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up, break out in song. Arise, Barak. Take captive your captive son of Abinoam. The remnant of the nobles came down. The people of the Lord came down to me against the mighty. So came from Ephraim, whose roots were in Amalek. Benjamin was with the people who followed you. From Maker, captains came down. From Zebulon, those who bear a commander's staff. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah. Yes, Issachar was with Barak, sent under his command into the valley. In the districts of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. They're talking about the picture of Israel coming together and uniting, the tribes uniting in fighting to free Israel from an oppressor. Why did you pens? Why did you stay among the sheep pens to hear the whistling for the flocks? In the district of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he linger by the ships? Asher remained on the coast and stayed in his coves. The people of Zebulon risked their very lives, so did Naphtali on the terrace fields. There were some tribes that went. There were some tribes that didn't. The question is being asked in the song, why did some go? And why did some stay? Kings came, they fought, verse 19, that the kings of Canaan fought. At Tanakh, by the waters of Megiddo, they took no plunder of silver. From the heavens, the stars fought. From their courses, they fought against Sisera. The river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river, the river Kishon, march on my soul. Be strong. Then thundered the horses' hooves, galloping, galloping. Go his mighty steeds. Curse Marah, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its people bitterly because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jael. This was the woman who drove the tent peg into the evil leader. The wife of Heber the Kenite, most blessed of tent-dwelling women. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curdled milk. Her hand reached for the tent peg, her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Sisera. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet he sank, he fell, there he lay. At her feet he sank, he fell where he sank, there he fell, dead. Through the window peered Sisera's mother. Beyond the lattice she cried out, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why has the clatter of his chariots delayed? The wisest of her ladies answers her. Indeed, she keeps saying to herself, Are they not finding and dividing the spoils? A woman or two for each. Colorful garments as plunder for Sisera. Colorful garments embroidered, highly embroidered garments for my neck. All this is plunder. So may all your enemies perish, Lord. But may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had peace for 40 years. For 40 years they had peace because they cried out to God. 
they turned to the Lord and they served him. And when you and I turn to God, when we cry out to him, he'll raise up a deliverance in our life. He'll crush the attack in the head of the enemy like he crushed the head of Sisera. And the enemy will not plunder in your life and in mine because Jesus has already won the victory. Praise be to God, 1 Corinthians 15, I think, who always gives us the victory in Christ. Our victory is not our own, it's Jesus. And he shares his victory with you and me. Be blessed today.